Oh hey, what's up peoples, Hardleg Joe here, and it's that time again, yes, once more, I've decided to dip my difficult foot into the suspiciously warm waters of game design with another custom Yu-Gi-Oh archetype. And if you're wondering why I'm doing this again, blame the patrons. I had a poll asking them recently if they'd rather have this, an episode of Dumb Decks, or a discussion slash tutorial video of some kind, and they chose this. So here we are. To start with, I want to give you a little background on where the idea for this archetype came from, so you understand why I gave it the effects I did. A few weeks ago, I was talking to some of my patrons on Discord about the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! and the topic of power creep came up. Now, there's a lot of people who feel like Yu-Gi-Oh! cards have gained an insane amount of power creep over the years, and while that is kind of true, it's not nearly as bad as it could be. Despite their bad rep, the designers over at Konami have actually done some mildly clever things to slow down power creep over the years. Namely, by cycling through removal options. If you look at meta decks throughout recorded history, a bit of a pattern emerges. We'll tend to have a bunch of them that are really good at destroying things, followed up by the release of cards and archetypes that either can't be destroyed or gain effects from being destroyed, making that type of removal essentially useless. This will lead people to switch towards non-destruction removal, usually some sort of targeted effects, which in turn will be answered by monsters that either can't be targeted or just plain unaffected by things. This, in turn, leads towards a format based around negation, since the best way to defeat an invincible board is to stop it from being made in the first place. And what's the best way to play through a board full of negation? Well, you need a shit ton of destruction, which gets us right back to where we started. While it is a little bit more nuanced and complicated than that, there is, in general, a sort of cycle to things, where the newest decks aren't necessarily the best in terms of raw power, but instead just the decks that best counter the previous meta decks. This allows Konami to keep things in check by giving players different kinds of removal, rather than simply making the existing removal more and more devastating. With this in mind, I tried to predict the future a little bit with this archetype. I looked at the current game and thought about how I might design cards that would counter the current decks without just being outright better than them. Looking at today's meta, the major trend I've noticed is that there's a lot of negation going on. Orcist and Salamangrates have their counter traps. Sky Strikers rely on recycling Widow Anchor. Fogblade, Ash Blossom, Infinite Impermanence, and Called by the Grave are all staples being used at all levels of play by just about everyone, just because negations are so dang important right now. So, I created Hydrogen, an archetype of monsters that float when their effects are negated. Each of the eight monsters making up this archetype have the following effect. If this card's effects are negated, colon, you can special summon one hydrogen monster with a different name from your deck, semicolon, shuffle this card into the deck. Those of you who know how problem-solving card text works will notice that in this case, special summoning a monster is actually the cost of the effect, meaning it happens even though the effect is negated, in the same way that something like Dante will still mill three even if its effects are negated. The only actual effect is shuffling the card back into the deck, which is there so that, if your monster is negated and destroyed, or negated and banished, it'll recycle itself from wherever it ended up, allowing another hydrogen monster to summon it back out later. I'm pretty sure I did this right in the simplest way possible, but feel free to write out detailed explanations about how I'm wrong in the comments. Anyways, art-wise, the cards are machines modeled after different kinds of snakes, which have then been mixed with elements from the periodic table. Like most of the best Yu-Gi-Oh! archetypes, the name Hydrogen is a pun that both fits the art of the archetype while hinting at its mechanics. Metaphorically cut off the head of one of these snakes by negating its effects, and like the mythical Hydras of yore, another will pop up in its place. Uh, it, it's also, you know, hydrogen, the simplest and most common element, because the snakes are named after elements. Eh. 
Uh, the artist who drew these, Stoic Steve, whose channel's in the description, by the way, if you want to check him out, actually made sure to put little hydrogen symbols somewhere on all the snakes, which is a nice little touch. Sort of like how all the Crystrons have little crystal logos hidden somewhere on them, or how metal foes are covered in spoons for some reason. A lore aside, let's go through each monster and their actual effects. All the main deck monsters are level 3 machines who have simple ignition effects in addition to their float when negated effects. Since this is intended to be a go second deck that can play through a meta board, most of the effects are searching or removal. There are also fairly powerful effects so as to give the opponent somewhat of a choice. Since all the monster effects are hard once per turns, it may sometimes be worth it for the opponent to negate the effect, even though it means the monster will summon another hydrogen from out of the deck. Regardless, let's start this thing out with Hydrogen Carbon Cobra, a dark tuner with zero attack, 600 defense, and the simple but highly useful effect to, once per turn, special summon a hydrogen monster with a different name from your hand or graveyard. Easy, effective, makes every extra deck monster in the archetype with the greatest of ease. Next up is the Stratos of the deck, Hydrogen Titanium Taipan, a light monster with zero attack, 2200 defense, and the effect to, once per turn, search any hydrogen card from the deck. Again, nothing too special, but something essentially required in this day and age and made all the more better by the fact that if your opponent tries to Ash Blossom this, it'll just summon a monster from the deck instead, so it's a plus one regardless of what happens. After that, we have Mercury Mamba, a fire monster with 800 attack, zero defense, and the ability to, once per turn, reduce the attack of one monster on the field to zero. Not exactly removal, but it is non-targeting, non-destruction, and helps make up for the Hydrogen Monster's low attack values. Next in line, we have Radium Racer, a Wind Monster with 800 attack, 800 defense, and the ability to send all other cards in its column to the graveyard. It's a nice bit of non-targeting removal that works on both monsters and spell traps, and it further punishes Mech Knight players, as well as those foolish fools who facilitate them. You, you can't see it, but I'm shaking my fists like an old man at a cloud. Uh, finally, for the main deck, we have Hydrogen Plutonium Python, a water monster with a whopping 900 attack, 400 defense, and the effect to, once per turn, target up to half the spell traps your opponent controls and destroy them. This is a neat little effect. I can't quite decide if it's broken or not good enough. It's useless if your opponent only has one spell trap on the field, but if they decide to set five and pass, it becomes a solid plus two. Plus three if they have a field spell. Now, in addition to these five main deck monsters that make up the core, there are three extra deck monsters for the archetype, which give them added utility as well as some much needed attack values. To start with, Amalgam Anaconda is a light machine link 2 with bottom left and bottom middle arrows that can be made with any two monsters as long as one of them is a hydrogen. It has 200 attack and in addition to the standard hydrogen effect, it can, once per turn, target one other face-up card on the field and negate its effects, allowing you to either shut down your opponent's monsters and spell traps or trigger your own monsters for even more swarming. After that, we have Hydrogen Radioactive Rattler, a rank 3 Earth Ixie monster that can be made from any two level 3 machine type monsters. It has 1700 attack and defense, and once per turn it can detach one material to summon a hydrogen from the deck with its effects negated, which essentially lets you summon two monsters from the deck, though one of them can't use its other effect, obviously. Not the flashiest effect, but if anything turns out to be broken in this archetype, it'll probably be this thing, since summoning from the deck always seems to lead to problems, especially in Link format. Fortunately, the pool of level 3 machines is pretty much just limited to hydrogen and a couple of speedroids at the moment, so I don't think anyone can do anything too fancy with this, but you'll have to let me know down in the comments. Radiation aside, the last monster in the archetype, and in my opinion, the coolest looking, is Butane Boa, a level 6 fire synchro monster with generic materials. 
It has 2400 attack, 1000 defense, and once per turn it can banish a hydrogen monster from the graveyard in order to gain its effects until the end phase, essentially allowing you to search, summon, negate, or remove some cards from the field for a second time this turn, depending on what's engraved. Fortunately, the Ixie Monster's effect requires you to attach to activate it, so you can't use its effect again that turn, which I think makes this balanced enough. All that leaves, then, is our spell traps, of which we only have three, but they really kind of make the archetype. The most powerful, and also the most restrictive, is Hydrogen Gamma Burst, a normal spell that negates the effects of all monsters in the main monster zones until the end of the turn. But... You can't special summon the turn you use this, except for Hydrogen Monsters. It's great going second for turning off most of your opponent's board, great going first to trigger your Snecks and get a second monster out on the field, and not great in most generic decks since it archetype locks your special summons to just Hydrogen. Might be good in Yosinju's though, maybe? Chain Burn, perhaps? I don't know, let me know if you can think of any other deck that might be able to make use of this. I'm interested to see what kind of strange interactions you can think of. Moving right along, Hydrogen have a counter trap because of course they do. Hydrogen Power Siphon. This is essentially just an archetypal dark bribe, except it negates monster effects, and you can use it on your own monsters to go super plus. Also, if there's a Hydrogen in the extra monster zone, you can activate this the same turn it was set which doesn't quite make it a hand trap, but there's some utility there. Not sure if it would ever be used on the opponent's monsters, since it negates without destroying and lets them draw a card, but it's nice to have the option. Finally, the last card in the archetype, and the one with the strangest name, Rehydrogeneration, a normal trap that says target one card you control and two cards your opponent controls, and negate them. Also, if this card is in the graveyard and a hydrogen monster you control actually resolves one of its effects, you can set this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. Basically, an archetypal Icarus attack, but with negates instead of destruction, and some added Lost Wind-style recycling, just because it's a trap, and they need as much help as they can get these days. I was originally thinking of making this a quick play spell and removing the recyclability, but I think that might be a little bit too broken. I don't know though, again, you tell me. In general, I really tried to skirt the edge of making a meta level deck without making it too broken. And since I'm not willing to spend time testing these, I'm not exactly sure how well I did. That's why I'm looking for your opinion. Was the archetype too good? Was it not too good enough? Do you even care about custom archetypes at all? Uh, and if you do, did you notice some of the little details there, like where the names of the extra deck monsters come from, or why the monsters have the attack values that they do? Whatever you think, let me know down in the comments, and it'll help me decide what to do in the future. Still not sure if I'll be making any more of these, or if I'll just end it with a trilogy, but we'll certainly see. Regardless, I hope you liked this little dive into game design. If you'd like to play the deck yourself, all the cards are up on Dueling Book. If you'd like to support the channel, you can donate to my Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel without using money, you can like, comment, subscribe, and share the video. And regardless of what you do, I, I wish you to have a great and happy day. Until next time, good luck, and have fun.